you're going to be using two ply fine for the US and five ply for Australia and I use six skeins of these. I got three different colors and I used two skeins of each before I was done and you don't have to uh, change colors every time I just wanted to have this see how you can see the previous color in every row I wanted to have that effect but at the end I had so many tails that I had to to work in so if you're not a fan of hiding a lot of tails then you can just get six skeins or three skeins of one color three skeins of another uh, it's up to you but you're definitely going to need uh, six skeins if you're going to make a long skirt that's another thing you can uh, decide who you're making it for how big they're going to be how long they're going to be so all I can do is tell you what I used for mine which was six skeins you're also going to need a 3.5 millimeter hook which is a size E hook for the US and you're also going to need a bigger size hook I know that uh, four and a half millimeters can be difficult to find in the US so um, you can use a five millimeter size H hook if you'd prefer but you just need one size higher to make the beginning chain and then later on you'll use it to make the top of the skirt but for the main part of the stitch you're going to be using your 3.5 or size E hook you're also going to be needing an elastic band I got my uh, I got a white one but as you can see it kind of shines through it was good uh, color when I was thinking about filming the tutorial but for real use for you I would recommend getting a black one and this is the same kind that you know you get in your skirts or shorts that have the elastic band you can probably find this uh, in a material shop and be able to buy it uh, the exact amount that you want like maybe a meter or something like that uh, or maybe uh, you can find it inside any craft store they may sell it by the roll there I'm not sure but that's where I went here in Israel to find my elastic band so I'm trying to think if I oh you're also going to need a sewing needle to sew your elastic band together and to sew all the way around you can use a sewing machine which of course just makes it so much easier but you can easily do it by hand too because you're not even going to be sewing into the elastic band only to create the circle and then sewing around the edges and I'll, I'll give you the tutorial on how uh, to do that at the end of this video so go ahead and grab your yarn uh, elastic band your hooks and let's get started okay I, I showed you guys uh, a scarf done in this stitch and I had to show you something in a uh, in the round so that you could learn how to do this stitch uh, the multiples for this stitch in the round is six so just straight up six so when you begin you definitely want the measurements of the person that you're making this for uh, very important um, and like for instance if uh, like my daughter she was about 23 inches around the waist and you want to double that size so I'm I kept chaining in sets of six the multiples of six until I reached double the size that you need so I'm using this bigger yarn just because I'm hoping it'll show up better on camera and but of course you want to use the smaller hook and the smaller size let me find the end here there we go so once you got the measurements and you know about how long you need to make your chain then you can go ahead and grab your bigger hook which is going to be uh, the four and a half millimeter or size H hook for this tutorial though since I'm using this bigger hook just don't mind me that this hook and yarn is so big okay and you want to make sure that you chain loosely even though you're using a big, bigger hook don't do it quickly and make the chain itself tight just take your time make it kind of loose and then when you do grab out your tape measure and this is in centimeters then you will measure so say you needed 30 total of course you're going to need a much bigger circle uh, take your measurement and measure your chain so 
you want to keep going until you've got double the size around that you need. Keep in mind you're going like this all the way around and once you've got it the chain double the size that you need in length then you're going to grab your chain grab it from here where you know that this is the top of the chain and just follow it down like this you want to make sure there's no twist and turns in your chain and when you make it to the very end of your beginning chain you want to slip stitch and that's how you will create your your ring to begin your skirt just make sure that this is good because this is going to be the final size here okay once you have your ring you want to do a chain of three and then in the next five stitches you want to work a triple crochet the chain beginning chain three counts as your first triple crochet so you'll have six stitches in a row ah, I'm fighting with my yarn here So that's four triple crochets plus my chain. Oops, I did an extra here. Oops. Okay, so you have five triple crochets and you're beginning chain three. So that's your first six stitches. Then you'll want to chain two. And then without skipping a stitch, you want to go into the very next stitch and you're going to start your next set of six triple crochets in a row and then once you get your next six triple crochets in a row you'll chain two and then you'll start right back in the next stitch starting your next set of six triple crochets in a row and you want to continue to do this all the way around for your round Okay, when you get to the end of the row, you will have just completed your six triple crochets in a row, and this is your beginning chain three. Usually you do a chain two in between each stitch, I mean in between after every six triple crochets, but at the end of the row, you only want to chain one, because when you do the slip stitch in the, the round, that will count as your second chain. So what you want to do is chain one, find the top of your beginning chain three and do your slip stitch now if you ever did uh, the rows where I taught this stitch back and forth usually uh, this round we would be working in the chain two spaces but just to simplify this beginning row I'm gonna do a little differently but it will work out to where from now on after this round everything will be the same as before so to begin round two if you notice, you, you've done six, 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 sets of six. You're going to be wanting to get to the center of these six stitches. So you're going to be slip stitching in the spaces in between. So you're going to be doing one, two, three slip stitches to reach this center of the six. So I'm going to go into my first space here in between my chain and my first triple crochet and do a slip stitch. Then slip stitch in between the next two triple crochets. That's two. And then you'll slip stitch for the third and final time, which will bring you up in the center space with three triple crochets, three triple crochets. So which, once you're here, you want to chain six. Three, four, five, six. And then you want to count down three from the hook. One, two, three. And in this third chain, you want to do a slip stitch. That'll create your first picot. Now you're going to be working all in the same space. You're going to work a triple crochet. Once you do your triple crochet, you'll chain three. This will be doing your picot. You'll chain three and you'll slip stitch on the post of the triple crochet. And you can just go in between these two space, the space between your your last and you're just uh, the stitch you just made 
and you'll be on that post and you just slip stitch. You need to have six of these uh, triple crochet and picot in a, a space. So you've gotten two, so now you need to do four more and I know it's going to be kind of a pain because you're working in this small space so just kind of move over if you need. It's going to be harder for me because it's thicker yarn. So do your triple crochet, then you want to chain three and again you'll be on the post so go between those stitches here and do a slip stitch. So you have three and you need to do that three more times. So triple crochet, then chain three, and then slip stitch. So go ahead and do that, finish your shell, and I'll be right back. Okay, once you've gotten your six triple crochets, do picot on the end. After every picot shell, you will want to chain two and then usually before you would have to go in between the, the sets but we're doing a little differently this time so you're going to be going into that chain two space and doing a single crochet then after your single crochet you'll chain two again and then you're ready for your next picot shell again you'll be going into the middle space in between three picots on this side, I mean three triple crochets on this side, three triple crochets on this side, you're going to be working in this space. But you go right into it, you don't need to slip stitch or anything. So find that space, then you'll put your triple crochet, your first one of your shell, in there. And then chain three, going to create your picot. Just go into this space here that's between the chain and the triple crochet to grab up that post and slip stitch. And that's your first one. Now you'll be triple crocheting and picot again. One, two, three. Slip stitch on the post of that triple crochet you just did. This is three. You're just basically going in the spaces between the one you just did and the previous one to grab that yarn slip stitch. So continue that and I'll see you back here in a minute. Okay, I just finished that shell picot. Uh, now as you can see you have one and then the chain two, single crochet chain two. Then you start your next picot shell. So again after your picot shell you'll do your chain two. Find that chain two space, single crochet and then chain two again and then you are ready to take your next six triple crochets, find the center one again, and then work your next picot shell here. So you want to continue to do this for the whole round and I will see you when you get back. Okay, I'm almost done with my row here. Just did my last picot shell, chain two, did my single crochet in my chain two space here. And now you want to only chain one because again, when you do your slip stitch at the end of the round, it's going to count as your second chain. You want to find, not the picot, but the chain three. You'll find the top of the chain three. One, two, and three. And you'll be slip stitching to end the round there. And that will end your round two. And for coloring, if you guys are wondering, This I did later, the top part. So basically you're here. Um, this was my very first row, which was this one. And then I changed colors for my very next one, which was this one. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. So if you're wanting to do the coloration or wondering how I did the coloration for the beginning versus the first picot row, I changed colors, literally every round I changed colors. So. Um, so for round three, um, let's see if I can get a little closer for you here. Okay, we're going to be working, uh, unlike when we did in the round, it was, I mean the, the row, it was much easier to grab a hold of the post from behind. Now to do it this way, it's going to be a little bit more tricky. So we're going to be wanting to do the back post, working on the back post, uh, doing back post triple crochets. So this chain here was our very first essentially counts as our very first triple crochet and picot and 
Um, you don't have to chain one, but it does help uh, to get back here because you want to come from behind and you're going to be coming from the side and going into the space after the chain just to kind of push that post back to work on and you want to do a slip stitch. Now if it helps you to be able to get your yarn back here to be able to push back that, you can chain one and it'll give you a little bit more space to work around so that you can get behind here. But you don't have to chain one. It's optional and it's not going to really change much. It's just going to make it easier for you. So it's up to you. So basically you just want to go and push that chain back like that. Oh, first got to yarn over because remember we're doing triple crochets here. So you want to yarn over twice and then you're going to go and push that post back. And it helped me, if you've ever, ever done the crocodile stitch, how you have to fold so that you can pop up that stitch to work off of it. It definitely helps because you're kind of going from behind the stitch. So you'll yarn over and pull, pull from that post there and it'll give you four loops on your hook. You know, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And that's your very first triple crochet worked on back post triple crochet, sorry. So you'll do that again. Let me fight with my yarn for a second. <coughs> sorry for the clearing of the throat. I've been sick, so I have congestion. So again, yarn over twice, and then you can go from the space here in between the stitch you just did, and then this next stitch that you want to work on, and then push that back. And then you'll see your post sticking out here. Again, you can fold this to pop that out. Four loops on the hook, and then do your triple crochet. You have a total of six stitches. You'll be doing this on the first three, and then you'll do something different. So just go ahead and do this last one here. Okay, we've got three triple crochets, worked on our first three um, peacock triple crochets. So once you've got your first three done, you want to chain two. And then you'll just go right back into the very next post and do what you just did, but for the next three. So I'm going to go into this stitch, push it back, and fold it. Once you get this down, it's going to go so fast, so don't be afraid. Then you come between the next, push that post back, work your next triple crochet, and then the last one. There, now you've got, <coughs> sorry. Okay, now you've got three triple crochets, chain two, three triple crochets. I keep calling them triple crochets, but you know, actually they're called back post triple crochets. So you got three back post triple crochets, chain two, three back post triple crochets. And without skipping uh, or chaining or anything like that, you just wanna go right into your next and start working on your next shell. So yarn over twice. This is the chain two. Remember this is chain two, single crochet, chain two. So this is not the post you wanna work on. Find your shell, count the triple crochets, make sure you know where all six are. Start on the first one and then pick up, push that post back. You can fold this to make it easier for yourself. And start working your next three triple crochets on the post of the first three triple crochets. Then once you've got the three, again chain two. Then you'll be working triple crochet on the next three. hard to show when you have to fold to be able to crochet. It's hard to show on camera what you're doing. There you go, that's the next one. Three back post triple crochets, chain two, three back post triple crochets. And then again, you'll move on to your next shell and just start right into the first post, the next shell. You'll want to continue this all the way around for round three 
and I'll show you how to end your row when you get back up to the beginning. Okay, I reach into my row. You can see I already did the one on this side, so you know you're done. So all you want to do is find the top, the stitch of the very first triple crochet that you did and just slip stitch into that stitch to end your round. And then you're going to be repeating this stitch over and over again. So you're going to do just like you did for round two. You're going to slip stitch over three times. One, two, three. Only difference now is that we're actually in the chain two space. And then you'll just begin again by doing your chain of six. And then counting down three, one, two, three, to create your first picot. And then you'll start your triple crochet. And the next picot, you slip stitch on the triple crochet itself. And then you'll do your picot. And then um, the space here, see there's three on this side, three on this side. There's just a single space. That's where you're going to be doing your single crochet. Okay, I'm going to show you. Got my picot uh, shell worked in my chain two space. And then there's a space here that falls in between uh, each shell. This is again where you want to do your picot. Your picots will always be worked one on top of the other, as you can see by this one. So this space in between here is where you'll be working your single crochet. So again, after every shell, you'll do your chain two, find that space in between here to do your single crochet. Then you'll chain two, then you'll start right into the chain two space here above your last picot shell. We'll be working in the chain two spaces this time. So it's going to be much easier, unlike the last time, to work your picot shell. And you'll be continuing this pattern over and over and over again until you reach your desired size. And I recommend that you end on a picot row like this because before you do your before you do this row where you work your triple crochets behind it, just leave it open like this on your very last row. Just do the picot for a nice border on the end of the skirt or dress or whatever you decide to make. <clears throat> now I want to show you what I did after I got done with the length of my skirt. Okay, I'm back. I wanted to grab, I should say I forgot to grab my uh, other color yarn because I don't want to cut this instructional yarn stuff. So once you've got the length of your skirt that you want, then you're going to start working with this very first round that we did. So you're going to be flipping your skirt over this way and we're going to be working on the other side of this beginning row, round, whatever. So uh, you're also going to be using the same size hook. So your 4.5, uh, not 4.5, 3.5 millimeter hook or size E hook. You're going to be using it just for the first three rows, I believe. Yeah, first three rows. Um, so it doesn't really matter where you attach it um, because you're basically just going to be doing single crochet decreases. So just pick a place to slip stitch your yarn onto and then Grab a stitch marker, and again, I only have one stitch marker. It's my Heart Sprinkles stitch marker, so I'm going to use that here. It's going to get right onto the stitch itself and put my, attach my marker there. You can use yarn too if you prefer to use yarn. Um, and then you're going to be working your single crochet decreases. You're basically going to take your double the size of the waist uh, that you began with and you're going to shrink it down half the size now. So you're going to go in and pull up a loop, then go in the next one, pull up a loop, 
three loops on your hook, pull through all three loops. And you continue this all the way around. You're going to be grabbing up one stitch, grabbing up the next stitch, pull through all three loops. Pull up one stitch, pull up the second stitch, all three loops. So continue to work all the way around doing your decreases and I'll see you back here in a moment. Okay, so once you reach the last stitch, you just want to go ahead and slip stitch in this beginning stitch and still staying with the same size hook, just chain one and go right back into that stitch and do a single crochet. And you just want to work one single crochet all the way around for the next two rounds. So for rounds two and three, just put one single crochet in each stitch around. So go ahead and do your two rounds of single crochets and I will see you back here when you're done. When you get to the end of the row, the end of the row of your first single crochet row, just keep on going. If you have it marked here, then you know uh, after the second round single crochets where your beginning stitch is. Okay, I just got done with my second round of single crochets. Once you've done that, you want to go ahead and switch over to your larger size hook, the same one that you used uh, to start your your chain. So if you used five millimeter hook or a four and a half millimeter, switch to that same size now and staying with the same color. I, like I showed you here, I used all the same color to make this top section. So you no need to switch. And then just continue to single crochet all the way around. Using the smaller hook at the beginning, tightened up just the very first few rows where naturally it's a little bit looser and then now you really need to switch over to the bigger hook because if you don't it's going to be too tight. Believe me I tried it, not a good idea. A lot of uh, frogging. So continue to work your single crochets all the way around and I can't say for how many rows because depending on how big of a gumi you got. If you got one half the size, then that means you have less rows that you need to do in order to cover it up. The idea is to continue to crochet rows until you have double the thickness of your gumi and uh, your elastic. Sorry, they call it gumis out here in Israel. <laughs> so your elastic band. Once you've crocheted double the size of your elastic band, then and you can fold it over the elastic band where you can't see it. Plus, uh, you have a few rows below it because that's important. You want to be able to sew it in there, but you still want to have a little bit extra uh, underneath the band because you want it to be able to, you know, to sew it a lot easier. It's going to help you a lot later. later. It's going to help you a lot later on to have that extra few rows. So don't uh, shorten yourself here. Definitely make enough uh, rows of single crochet to fully cover your elastic band plus a couple of rows so that you don't have to sew it right up to the beginning of the skirt. Give yourself a few extra rows to be able to bring it down. So fold it over plus two rows here and you're good to go. Then you want to get your elastic band and make sure that it goes around the waist of the person that you're making it for and you want to make sure that you pull it. It has to be, the elastic band has to be a bit flexed because um, remember you want it to be able to grab onto that person so that the skirt won't fall. So once you pull it around them and they say it's not uh, too tight then you want to mark this place and then you'll cut just a little bit more than uh, where they're comfortable because you're going to be overlapping a little bit of the elastic band and you want to sew 
those two pieces together. And you can easily do this by hand, even easier with a sewing machine, but it can easily be done by hand with just a needle and thread. Then once you've gone back and forth and you've sewn that elastic piece really well, then you want to, again, put it on the bottom part of your, uh, on the inside, obviously. You want the fold to be on the inside. So put it on the inside and then put your flap over it. And then all you need to sew is in the material, the crochet material. You're just basically creating a pocket for the elastic band to just hang out in. You don't have to crochet on the elastic band itself. So just crochet easy enough with a needle and thread. You can even do it with a tapestry needle. Just sew all the way around, around creating a pocket. And then you can uh, just cut your yarn, tie a knot, all that, hide all your tails, and then you're, you're good to go. And that's it. That is how you make the Peacock Shell Skirt. I hope that this was helpful. And if it was, please don't forget to smash that like, bu like button and be sure to check me out on Facebook for all the latest news on what's going on with my channel and what's to come and everything. And you can find that in the links uh, below where all the places you can find me. And my site, of course, www.meladorascreations.com. Also, my Facebook page, I share links to other uh, patterns that are free that I uh, think that are cool. And maybe you can find something new there. I also do a lot of pinning on uh, Pinterest. Pinterest? Pinterest. So check me out there too. Um, so that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done that already. You guys have a great day.